Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in today's video, we're going to give you our top 25 tips that every first time Virgin Voyager cruiser should know. Listen, are you about to go on your first Virgin Voyages cruise? In this video, we're going to give you the top tips and tricks and some of the things that's going to make your life yeah, a whole my, lot easier yeah. going upon your first Virgin Voyages cruise. We might have a couple of bonuses at the end. Y'all just going to have to stay tuned and wait for it. You ready for it? Let's go. Tip number 18 for the first time Virgin Voyages cruiser is you do not need luggage tags. I know. If you it's are weird. Yeah. If you, <laughs> And while I'm there, you don't have to print off a boarding pass either. Like with Carnival, just before you go, a few weeks before, you print off your boarding pass and your luggage tags. Virgin Voyage don't have those. So you're going to feel a little naked when you go. The <laughs> you only do. thing you're going to have in your hand really is going to be your bags. And your app. And your app and your, and your passport because you got to have that in your hand too. But you can bring your bags to the porter as early as 8 a.m. The queen alluded to that a little early in the video. You can bring it to them at 8 a.m. And they also provide shuttle services there that they can take you to the, what's it called? The Bayside Marketplace. The Bayside Marketplace. So you can have some time out there before time get on the ship. I'm like not we, saying it's free. Right, it's a shuttle service. It's yeah. self-service. <laughs> yes, yes. But it still beats having to sit and wait at the terminal. Cause like we told you, if you arrive before your check-in time, you ain't gonna be able to get on the ship, baby. Mm -mm. So keep that in mind. But it is a good option to be able to be able to drop your luggage off yeah. over there, just in case you want to do something else and don't want to have to take it around. If you, especially if or you got to hang out at the airport, right? Because we came in so yeah. early. That we just yeah, hung out at the airport. Yeah, so I think it's, like you said, it's a perfect option that you flying in early. Yeah. Yeah. Tip number 19. Let me go behind my shield. <laughs> Virgin Voyages does require a passport. Yes. I know you probably heard different things all over the internet. I'm a travel agent and I have heard it from agents. Like, which one is it? Yeah. I'm going to stick with what's in writing. Yes. And in writing, they really want you to have your passport and even in a check-in service, there is no option to, I'm bringing a birth certificate. Nope. The only option is scan your passport. passport. Yep. When you get on board, passport's ready. There isn't anyone alluding to the fact that there is an exception to the rule. Although, as a travel agent, I've also been told in extreme emergencies. Yeah. See, here's this is where I tell people we're not gonna travel this far and hope that we that you you are in the criteria of extreme they don't because right they don't tell you what that is. Yeah, they don't tell you what that means. I don't know if that means you have applied for your passport. You can prove that you applied and you're approved and. It, it just is, hasn't come, come. Yeah. Or you can't get it because maybe your, your your records are so screwed up that you're having a hard time get it. We not gonna play them kind of games. No. Passport only. Yes. <laughs> come <laughs> with your passport. We, like we said, this costs too much money for you to be playing around, for you to just hope that they will take your birth certificate. You're trying to risk over they start at 1600 and on up. Yeah. You willing to risk that to go when you can go and get your passport for less than $300? Right. Just get the passport. Yeah, get the passport, man. Tip number 20. On Virgin Voyages, they do not have like the sign and sale card like they have on Carnival. They have what they call the, the band, band that goes around your wrist. So like if you're a husband and wife, Mines will say something different than hers. I think Mines was a Hoi sailor, and I can't even remember what you were. Ahoy. Ahoy sailor, and I can't remember what you were Feeling saying. naughty. Yeah. Oh, you was naughty, too. Oh, you was naughty, too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, that band was perfect. I felt like it was out the way. It was very convenient because it worked your room that you put up against your little keypad thing they had. You ready? Yep. Is this how we get in? All right, I heard it. 
You used it when you went to the bar or anything you had to purchase on the ship. Mm -hmm. Also, it worked when we said Bimini Beach Club, which was a game changer. Yes. Uh, also, you can use it in the casino. But keep in mind, if you decide to use it in the casino, and the only way we know this is because we went to the cage, we went to, the cage to find out how to use it <laughs> um, in the casino. And she was like, if you use it, it's going to charge you 7%. Right. Yeah. So if you don't want to be charged 7% in a casino, you're going to have to spend cash. cash. So, and also it helps you to get on and off of the ship. And again, it's called the band. It's a life changer. If you've been on Carnival Cruise and you know you got the lane around there, it's flopping Messing everywhere. Messing up your outfits. You know, so yeah, you have the band. Also, it gives you access to Richard's Rooftop. But the richest rooftop band is a different color than everybody else's. Of course it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> Make us feel like peasants. And it also tracks you along the ship as well. So yeah. if you have to have deliveries or anything like right. that. Like because they have the, the infamous shake, shake, shake the champagne mm -hmm. and you shake your app. And the champagne comes to you, but yeah. it works through the band. Look, my husband, it was so funny. Yeah, I did. He accidentally <laughs> shook his phone. He said, why are all these bottles on, on here? Phone? I'm like, what the? I said, this is what happens when you don't study your app. <laughs> I said, oh, they think you're ready for champagne. Yeah. He said, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> Tip number 21. This is a crucial one. Yes. As a travel agent, when I received them, I immediately put breaks because this right here can buck up your entire app experience, yeah, which app. means you're not gonna get in. Every person that goes on Virgin Voyages has to provide an email. We cannot share email addresses mm -hmm. on Virgin Voyages. I know us wives love to do everything for our husbands <laughs> and we like to put our address in their stuff because we wanna do everything for them. He gonna have to be an adult on this cruise and have his own, own email. email address mm -hmm attached to his reservation right. and the reason for that being is whatever email address you provide when you register or when you make your reservation either yourself or a travel agent is the email address that you have to use to log into the app yep. and that app is everything to you while you're on board yep. there is no sharing of that email because of that app it is unique to the person so Use your own email. Everyone has to have a separate email. If not, you're not going to be able to get on the app because what's going to happen is guess one's going to log in, guess two is going to try to log in, yeah. and one's going to be locked out. Yep. One at a time. That's how you got to do it. Tip number 22. Um, we always tell people, we even tell our accountable people this, is that when you get on a ship, take advantage of the safe in the room and that that's the time to store away all the valuables, whether it's your wallet, your keys, your passport, or any valuable things, your laptop, anything that you don't want to get stolen when you leave out your room, which I don't think they're gonna steal nothing on there. I didn't uh, feel yeah. nowhere near threatened mm -hmm. that anything was gonna be taken, but I still do it. It's people and yeah, people. Right, so be sure to secure all your valuables inside of your safe when you get in your room. And the one thing that makes me feel good about the safes, I know people say, oh, they have keys to them, they can get into them. I can tell you from prior experiences on cruise ships is that if you have problems with your safe, there is a person that has to come and be with another person to actually get master access to the safe in order to get this situation rectified. Right. When I saw that, I said, Oh yeah, the yeah. chances of somebody going in using a master key is slim to none because it yeah. was almost <clears throat> like, I used to work in a bank branch. We could not go into the vault alone. We had to have two people in the vault at the same time right. to verify what you were doing. And it was like big brother. I felt like that same situation was happening with the safety. Yeah, because we had asked the room stewardess, we were like, we can't get in um, the safe. Somebody had purposely yeah. Had it so that it wouldn't close. Close, yeah. And he was like, I can't do I can't anything, do it but I have to call. And when the master key comes, I have to come back and supervise him. And we had to be present. And we had to be present. Mm -hmm. So he was like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> we said, come back later. Uh, yeah, don't even worry about it right now. <laughs>
Tip number 23. If you are not a person that like really like studies the map and the graphs and the keys of different cruise ships, you may not know this, but if you book on any of these ships, I'm not going to tell you not to book on level eight, but let me prepare you for what is going to probably be your experience on level eight. Level seven below you is where most things are. Galleys, different things like that. If you're forward facing, then you are right above, I think it's one of the clubs or something like that. And then also those lifeboats are right there. So usually when you like go in and you want to make a reservation, you'll see something that says limited view sea terrace or something like that. They're on deck eight. Yeah. Because usually if you go out to your sea terrace, you're going to be looking directly <clears throat> at or in between the um, life rafts. So go ahead and start at nine. And that way you can really kind of give yourself a buffer between that. Am I saying something's wrong with eight? Absolutely no, not. No. But go ahead and know that it may be a little bit noisier. You may be able to hear some things while you're trying to sleep. And also your view may not be what you expected it to be, depending on That's what the most position right you are on the your ship. View. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Keep that in mind. Tip number 24 for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser is they have secret menus. They do. But we found out about the secret <laughs> menus by the waitress at Razzle Dazzle telling us that there was a secret menu. When you go to any of the restaurants, ask them. Awesome. We're not sure if all of them have it. She told us to ask for it if we came back to Razzle Dazzle that night. So we do know that Razzle Dazzle has a secret menu. And that was breakfast. I don't yeah. know about dinner. I don't yeah, know. so you're just going to have to ask. It's, it's no. All of it is a secret. My travel agent you trade it ain't even tell me this. Yeah, so we just let you know the secret about the secret. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. Basically. <laughs> Tip number 25, which could be a crucial one if you fall into this category. Virgin Voyages does match loyalty statuses for certain cruise lines. Yeah, man. That, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link below because it's just too many to name. But if you are Carnival, for instance, they match your diamond and platinum. Right. If your other ones, basically the higher tiers of those ones is where they start to loyalty match. It does have benefits that come along with it. I will pin and put a link below yes. so that you can read up on it yourself. Yeah. Way too much to it's put into yeah. this um, video verbally. But it's great that they will match it because we've seen people even ask questions about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's like, like getting price matched at the grocery store, man. You ain't lying. <laughs> Boom. Say, level me. Yeah. <laughs> Take advantage of that loyalty match if you are there. All right, as promised, at the end of the video, we said we would give you a few bonus tips. All right, so the first bonus tip, a lot of people be wondering, um, if I'm a solo cruiser, should I do this trip? If I'm a couple, should I do this trip? So we just want to kind of give you the demographic age of the people who are on the ship majority, which is about 85% of the people mm -hmm. who sail Virgin Voyages between the age of 34 and 62. So that kind of gives you a great range that you ain't too old or too young or too young to do Virgin Voyage. And we always say, please try it. And it was like a 50-50 split between right. couples and yeah. solo cruisers. Right. It was really like a definitive line, like right, right. down the middle. Right. So yes, case you wanted. The ages you're going to see between 34 and 62 is what you're going to see. And that's so true. It was true. It was true. And it was a vibe. Yes. The next bonus, as promised, my husband alluded to it a little bit just now, but do not go by what everyone says. Try it for yourself. If yeah. there is something that interests you about this, like you can't stop watching it, you yeah. can't stop researching it. Like, what is it that's intriguing about this? It's kind of your clue just to go ahead and check it out. I'm always that person. Like, if something keeps doing like this to me, maybe it's just my cue to just go ahead and, and figure it out. out. Right. If you hate it, you just never have to do, do it, it again. again. Right. But at least you will have an experience for yourself because there's nothing more like, uh, than taking someone else's experience or what they have said about something and making it your the reason of why, your reason of why, why you don't want to do it, it or yeah. the reason why mm -mm, not going to yeah. do just go ahead and try it. It yeah. like we said, it could be something you totally hate. It could be something that you totally are like, 
wow i just yeah. didn't know that i could just have this much fun in an atmosphere that's just not so familiar to me right all right if you have enjoyed this video you will want to check out this video next uh, when we did the review of the scarlet lady mm -hmm. and we're going to see you in the next video peace, peace.